Hello, and welcome back to Exotic Beverage Reviews. This is episode 6, I think. Today's victim is Sonic the Hedgehog Speed Energy Drink, which hopefully doesn't contain any actual hedgehog. This drink is produced by Boston America Corporation, which is an American drink manufacturer, obviously, situated in Boston, Massachusetts. Also, obviously. Uh, Boston America make a vast range of energy drinks based on pop culture, including licenses such as Ted Lasso, Pac-Man, Hello Kitty, Dragon Ball Z, and Bob Ross. It's pretty eclectic. I have one more drink from their range, but I'm not gonna say which one it is, so stay tuned and subscribe and like and all that stuff, and I'm sure the suspense will be over soon enough. It's called Sonic the Hedgehog Speed Energy Drink. Sonic the Hedgehog, for those of you who have been living under some very large rocks since the early, I don't know, 1990s, uh, Sonic is the mascot for Sega Corporation and the main character in the Sonic the Hedgehog series of video games. He's famous for being blue and being fast, and all things considered, he's probably a pretty good branding choice for an energy drink. There have been many energy drinks over the years to use the word speed in their names, and several different and possibly unrelated energy drinks to have been called just simply speed. But this one is not just speed, this is Sonic the Hedgehog speed. It's a special kind of amphetamine. It literally makes no claims at all on the can. It doesn't claim to be good for you. It doesn't claim to be bad for you. It doesn't claim to give you any capabilities or solve any problems. It's really just a can with a hedgehog on it. So this is a surprisingly difficult category. At face value, the design is fine. It has Sonic on it. It's got a bit of the Green Hill Zone checkerboard ground and grass. The logo is the classic Sonic logo. It's pretty great. But here's the thing, it's generic. All of the Boston America energy drinks are pretty similar. It's just a franchise property that's been slapped onto a can. Some are more clever than others, but there's definitely a formula at play here. Also, and this might be a slightly controversial thing to point out, but the label on the can is actually a label. It's a shrink-wrapped piece of plastic that goes over the can. It's not actual on-the-can printing, like most energy drinks. And while I really don't mind, I mean, it's just a different material to print on, it kind of makes the whole product look a little bit cheap. It kind of feels cheap too. We have one serving per container. This is a 355 milliliter or 12 fluid ounce can. So it's about the same size of a, as a normal Coke can. And it's not recommended for children, people sensitive to caffeine, pregnant women, or women who are nursing. Okay, so we have carbonated water. That's a pretty good start. We also have high fructose corn syrup as a sweetener because it's an American energy drink. Uh, I personally actually don't mind high fructose corn syrup. It doesn't seem to have any detrimental effect on the flavor of the drink, so that's fine. We have citric acid and sodium citrate, taurine. There's our first familiar energy drink ingredient. We have natural flavor, which is a big wild card as far as giving us any clue as to what this stuff tastes like before we before we open the can. I hope it's not hedgehog. We have caffeine, we have potassium sorbate and potassium benzoate, which are preservatives, and we have a few more typical energy drink ingredients like uh, ginseng, guarana, inositol, a number of B group vitamins. And then we have FD&C blue number one and FD&C red number 40. FD&C blue number one suggests to me that this drink is very likely to be a blue liquid. It probably looks like window cleaner and that would be consistent with the Sonic the Hedgehog branding. FD&C red number 40 is listed after blue and it's often used with FD&C blue to give a richer, darker blue rather than a sort of turquoise-ish blue. But We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for ingredient investigations later in the video because we really need to talk about blue drinks and blue food and blue dyes and FDNC blue number one specifically. Let's do this. Holy crap, that's a color. Man, that's blue. Whoa! That's 
that's bluer than Windex. That's, whew, there's a lot happening there. All right, so it's come out of the can and it's basically the color of wrung out Sonic the Hedgehog. So <sighs> let's see how we go. It doesn't smell like anything. It smells like raw cordial syrup. Like I can smell that this is going to be chronically sweet, but it doesn't have any sort of fake berry maybe. I think it's gonna be berry flavored. It's blue, it's probably blueberry flavored or at least something berry-ish. But it doesn't have any sort of distinct, I'm going to taste like something um, smell, which is disconcerting, shall we say. All right, hedgehog's going in. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. Wow. It doesn't taste like an energy drink. It tastes like it'll, oh, Jesus, it tastes like it'll give you energy, but it doesn't taste like an energy drink. It just tastes like sugar and sugar and blue. That is intensely, unpleasantly sweet. Like, I, I like a sweet drink. I mean, I make energy drink reviews and clearly I like something that has some flavor to it, but man, that is just, you could have just left out all the ingredients except for the high fructose corn syrup because I think that's pretty much what it is. It's 99% oh, high fructose corn syrup, blue, and a hint of artificial berry flavor. Oh, that is eye-wateringly sweet. Oh, no, no. That tastes like, it tastes like you've gone to a fast food restaurant and you've ordered a soda, soft drink, and they have mixed it incorrectly and it's, oh man, my eyes are actually watering. Uh, it's, it's been mixed with like, 70% more syrup than it should have. Like, this is Bart Simpson squishy made 100% of syrup territory. I don't like it, just for the record. I haven't even got to the verdict yet, but that's just too much. That's, oh. Verdict is, no, no. Wow, look, I can't fault them for trying. It's got a hell of a lot going on as far as punching you in the face with it being an energy drink. Uh, I don't doubt that it's got the other energy drink ingredients in it, but man, it's just sugar. That is just pure fructose. It's so sweet, it hurts. Do I recommend it? I kinda don't, and I'm now quite scared of the other can from the same manufacturer that I've got sitting on the shelf waiting for, uh, waiting for this treatment. It's rough, it is, it's greasy. Like it just coats the inside of your mouth instantly with just ugh. And it, mmm, no, no is my review of this stuff. Not again, preferably not a first time. Good on them, the packaging's great. I'll give them credit for the packaging. It's as blue as hell, but it, oh, mmm. That's my answer. Let's get on with the ingredient thing because I, ne I need a rest from this. I'm gonna be up for a fortnight. So here's the thing. Blue is really hard. Humans only invented the color blue. They didn't invent the color blue. They discovered ways to make the color blue. They only invented it, let's say, as a functional pigment around 4,200 years ago by accidentally mixing some chemicals and minerals together. And for the longest time, it was a stupidly expensive pigment reserved only for royalty and for the filthy rich. That's why we have royal blue. The problem is that unlike the other primary colors, there isn't really, there's not a lot of blue in nature. At least not that's able to be broken down into a powder or a pigment or something for use in paint or dye. This is something that has baffled scientists and baffled artists for a really, really long time and it continues to do so. There have been several new shades of blue invented just in the last century using some pretty ludicrous scientific 
techniques. Whereas I'm pretty confident that most shades of red, or at least the approximations of them, have been available for thousands of years. The other colours are easy. Blue is really, really hard. Edible really bright blue just doesn't exist in nature. There's not a lot of blue food. Yet we live in a world with Sonic the Hedgehog energy drinks and blue Jolly Ranchers and blue Gatorade. All of these things are coloured with FDNC blue number one. FDNC stands for the Federal Drug, Food and Cosmetics Act, in which the legal status of the substance as a food additive is spelled out, at least in the USA. You might know FDNC blue number one by some of its other names like Food Colour E133, Acid Blue number nine, Olsen Food Blue number one, Atracid Blue FG, Erioski Blue, Xylene Blue. It's got it's got a lot of names. Neoland Blue, EA, or the really scientific catchy name for the substance, which is <laughs> sulfonate, which kind of gives you some clue how much this is not a natural substance. It's extracted from benzene sulfonic acid, which is a form of alkali salt. And when it's extracted using a bunch of complex chemical methods, you end up with a substance that's generally considered to be food safe, which doesn't give me a lot of confidence. Not because it's edible, but simply because it's just not digestible. 95% of this blue stuff passes straight through you and comes out the other end. And apparently that's good enough for the Food and Drug Administration. So what I'm saying here is that blue food and drink is kind of an abomination. And I always question whether it's worth actually consuming mystery chemicals just for the sake of having something that looks pretty. There are some more natural and arguably healthier alternatives to FDNC blue for making something at least vaguely or partially blue-ish, but they're just not that popular because they don't produce the same vivid shade of Sonic the Hedgehog blue that FDNC blue number one produces. So I guess my point here, again, is that like all ingredients in energy drinks, is the blue dye is probably okay in moderation, but I'd maybe rethink drinking too much blue Gatorade or hedgehog water. So that is Sonic the Hedgehog Speed Energy Drink. Thankfully, it contained no actual hedgehog, but it did contain a terrifying amount of blue. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, there's a subscribe button down there somewhere. I'd really appreciate it if you could find it and click on it a little bit. Stay tuned for the next video where I drink a weird thing and then complain about it on the internet. <laughs>